Hello, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Angela. I am the artist behind Clark Fine Art. Today we're going to be creating this painting of spring flowers. And up here in Maine, where I am from, we get lupins every year and they are everywhere. And they're just beautiful. So I decided that I'm going to paint something based on our spring lupins. So our supplies for today, we will be using a flat brush, a fan brush possibly, and a round. The colors are phthalo green, rose, violet, cobalt blue, and titanium white. So if you're going to paint this one, gather your supplies and let's get started. Okay, start off today, I'm going to take my flat brush. And I'm just going to grab some of my cobalt and a little white and start laying in some sky. And I don't mind if this is streaky. In fact, I kind of prefer it. I just want this kind of loose background. And I'm using a canvas board today. You can use any canvas board or you could use a regular canvas if you want to. You could even paint this on watercolor paper if you wanted. But if you painted it on like a watercolor paper or a mixed media paper, um, I would gesso the paper first or at least put down a coat of white paint and let that dry so that the paper's not absorbing all of the um, paint that's drying really quickly. I'll be happy, not that I like the humidity, but I'll be happy when we get a little bit more humidity in the air and my paint does not dry so quickly on my canvas. I'm just gonna keep working this back and forth. See, I keep grabbing a little bit of water and that's just to help thin the paint slightly and make it flow better on my canvas board here. I'm just going to keep laying this in about two thirds of my height. I just want to make sure if you see through any of the flowers that there's uh, the nice, you know, sky color behind them. And again, I can go any direction I want. It doesn't matter. I'm just getting a background on my canvas. I want to make sure that I'm not seeing any of the white of the canvas coming through. And I could have done this at my easel, but you know what? I don't think everybody has easels and today just felt like sitting at the desk. So doing it this way, as I'm pulling, I'm kind of getting like a swept cloud effect going on here and I actually really like that. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. This is actually a little organizer that I found at the Dollar Tree. I thought this would be great because it would hold three different wells of water and it was muck. So I figured I'd try it. Okay, so next, I'm going to come in with some of my phthalo green. These colors are all pretty much cool versions. And it's kind of what made me choose them. So I'm just thinking of like tall grasses. So I'm just going to be pulling this up into my background. You see, as I go, I started to pull some of that blue down here. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm going to come back. I actually can lay this in right along the bottom. I'm just, just putting down the just a base color. color. We're going to come over this again. I 
So now I can just keep pulling up my grasses and I can do this with my large flat brush, just using it on its side. Or I could even come in with my round and use that to pull some up. But using this on its side, I get some nice flickers at the top and sometimes those bristles spread out and I'll get more than one. I could also do this with my fan brush. So if I take my fan brush and you'll see as soon as you start to get that fan brush wet, your bristles will kind of splay out and that's just going to give me some nice little strokes there of grass and really feathers that up in the background. I get many strokes at the same time. And when I get my fan brush wet, they're going to splay out even more. And I'm just getting nice faint lines back there and it's really giving me the impression of more grass in the distance. I'm just gonna keep pulling that up. I'm not worried. I still have some of the canvas showing through here and I'm really not worried about that because we're going to lay in these flowers and then come back on top of that and put in more grass. So we're not worried if we can still see a little bit of that canvas coming through. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take my round brush and I'm going to really want to just kind of splatter in some color in this background. So I'm going to take my round. I'm thinning down this violet a bit. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to splatter in some color just all over that lower portion. really trying to soak up as much of that paint as I can with my round brush. So I come back here and tap, I'm just tapping on my brush. I can really get those splatters to fall in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my rose color. Pull some of that rose aside. Thin that down. And I'm thinning it down so that when I tap my brush, the paint will really just fall right out of it and splatter everywhere. Which this probably would have been better suited for my easel. I would have protected everything else on my desk. So I'm just doing the same with the rose color. And you can use any pink, you can use any purple, whatever you like. Use what you have. If you don't have these colors, take a red and some white, create a pink that you like. Take a red and blue and just make sure they're a cool blue, blue that leans more towards red than yellow and mix that with your red. Also make sure your red is a cool red that leans a little bit more towards blue than yellow. So now I have those sliders in and you can create your own purple. So if you don't have violet and you don't have rose, that doesn't mean you can't do this. You could easily grab any, you could do this with primary colors and you could create your own green, purple, pink. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy a bunch of paint. You can do this with a limited palette. Okay, so next I'm going to take white and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm just, I'm being a little more um, gentle with my splatters. I don't want as many white. I'm just going to tap in a few here and there. Because when I do my flowers, there will be some white in there. And so this can just look like pollen floating through the air. So now I'm going to come back with my round. I want to kind of 
tone this down a little bit. I'm going to pull a little bit of this pink. I'm going to blend it in. Because if I think about the pink, it's made with red. Red is opposite green. So if I pull in a little bit of that rose, I'm going to tone down my green a little bit. Darken it right up. And I'm just going to think where I want a few flowers. And so I'm going to bring these stalks up. They don't have to grow perfectly straight. They can be however, however you want. Perhaps I have a couple of small ones there, maybe a little here. Okay. So now I want to add the petals. And if you're familiar with lupins, the flowers grow up the stalk and they kind of grab that and grab a little white and they kind of go all around. They kind of go all around the stalk like that. Right? So I'm just dabbing. I took a little purple. I took a little white and I'm just kind of dabbing around. Come back with some more purple. There are lupins that are solid purple and there are lupins that have the purple and white like this. Those are my favorite. So I'm just going back up. And they're darker. The darker purple is at the bottom of the petal. And so I'm just kind of implying that. And they have some that are also pink and they have them that are pink and white, just like the purples, but you can do however. And lupins have leaves that actually come up and they fan out. Their leaves are more like, they're not tall like grass. Um, they fan, they're, they go more like that. Right, so they are just going to lay in some green just to give the hint that maybe these are actually lupins and I'm not going to mind if I paint over these I just want a few hints in there And I'm not trying to be photorealistic with this. I'm just laying down basic shapes. So if anybody knows, if you're from Maine, you see those shaped leaves, you know those are lupins coming. But the first thing that comes up is all of these like five, I, I don't want to say petal, but five leafed stalks come up. And then the next thing you know, you start to have that tall center stalk that comes up and you get lupins everywhere. And then they go to seed. And then the next year we have even more. We have a hill in our yard and I put some, I put some in one year and now they're just, they're spreading. I get, I get more and more every year. And these grow all around the stalk. So I'm going to have some that are facing forward. Right? Some, in, some in the center so that you 
you get that impression that yes, they're going, they're growing all around. They're not just coming off each side. And again, I'm not going for photorealism here. I just want, I want simple brush strokes that when you back up away from your painting, your brain goes, oh, flowers. Oh, look at that. That looks like lupin petals. Those must be lupins, right? So don't worry about it being perfect. I don't need to draw the perfect shape flower petal on a lupin. I just need to draw parts that you can look at and say, that must be a lupin. And what other flowers look like this? You might, you might see this and go, oh no, where we live, that looks like, you know, a whatever, whatever your flower is. Drop me a comment below. What flowers do you have in your local area that might look similar to this? So if I don't like the way it looks, I'll just let it dry and then I'll come back over it. My petals are seeming a little too just kind of all jumbled together, but that's okay. We're just going to, I'm just pulling up a little bit of the excess paint so that I can let that dry and come back in and tap a couple, just a couple um, that look slightly different. So I think I'm going to make my center one, one of these nice rose and white so I'm going to grab some of my rose and I'm really loading my brush up with the rose first so that I have lots of that rose paint in there and then I'm just going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of my brush and then I'm going to come in here and I'm just pressing right, just pressing and actually it, it's lighter at the top like that and dark at the bottom and I th actually think flat might lend itself better to this because I could put that white across the tip and really get the effect I'm looking for. I'm going to try that. And that's just experimenting, right? Ex grab a different brush. Try it. See if you like it. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm just using, this is a number nine flat out of the Art Echo brushes. And I'm going to grab the white on the tip. And so now I can load the top of that brush with the white and I'm going to hit it with that, yeah, with that white facing up like that. I actually like that a little better. I'm going to grab that pink on the bottom because I still have the white on the top. And you'll see the white is still loaded on the top of my brush. I keep loading the back with pink, but when I press, I still get some of that white coming off and leaving that mark. Again, just dabbing extra in there because I don't want it to look like they're only coming out from the left and right side. I want it to look like it's growing all the way around it. Let me just come back to this one, add a little bit more color in there. So now I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to put another purple one over here. Now I could also come in like this and just do purple and then come back if I wanted and touch the white on the tips. And the only thing about this brush is when you press with your flat brush, you might get some little strokes coming out, which you don't really want. So you just have to be careful not to press too hard so that you separate all the bristles. So I'll rinse that out. Come over here and grab a little bit of this white. And I'll just put some tips in there. And as I work my way up, of course, that is going to keep mixing and it's going to start to turn lavender color. I can just flip my brush over 
and get more of that untouched titanium white that's there. The multicolored, the white and the purple and the white and the pink, those are really my favorites. They do have them solid color. You can make your solid color if you want to. Just solid purples or solid pinks. It's your painting, right? How, whatever you like. And I can even just kind of throw some hints. Maybe there's some coming up in the background. Take some of that pink. I'm not even rinsing my brush at this point. I'm just grabbing. Oh, I need more water. My paint dries so fast. I'm just going to scoop up some more of that pink. And I'm just going to dab in some, just dabbing in some dots. Just giving hint that there's more flowers back there. And I'm just using the corner of my brush right now and just kind of tapping kind of tapping some dots in there. Just here and there. And now you see where all these little splatters are going to kind of really come into play. It's just too much water on my brush. Load up some more paint. Now in spring, we always, you look out and you just see all kinds of stuff flying through the air. Just anywhere that you feel you could use some more flour. Just dab in some dots back there. And again, I can come back. I'm going to let this dry because then I'm going to pull grasses right over top so that it just pushes these flowers into the field, right? I just want to move these back a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the hairdryer, get this dry, and we'll come right back and finish it off. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cool. I'm gonna take my green. And I'm gonna come back in and again, if I wanna throw in some more, loop in leaves. Now I'm just going to pull, and again, I don't mind if it goes over a little bit on my flower. It's not going to bother me. All it's going to do is push those flowers into the field. If you've ever driven up the highway, I mean, these are usually the flowers you see sitting off on the side in the tree lines. If there's any areas that I can still see the white of my canvas coming through, I'm really going to make sure that I go over that and catch it with this green. If I didn't catch it with my flowers, I'm just going to come back and make sure that I touch that and fill that in. And even carefully pull some more tall ones up in the background. The lupins generally tend to grow taller than the grass does. And just by making sure that I have a few more of these leaves that look like the leaves that grow up on the lupins, it's just going to help let people know that are familiar with our main flowers. And I'm sure these grow elsewhere other than Maine. Do you get these where you are? Drop me a comment. Let me know. 
I had never seen them until um, I, I lived in the South for Southern United States um, for many years. I had never seen them down there. And of course, coming back to Maine, they're everywhere. And they're definitely one of my favorites. Miss seeing them when you're away. And maybe grab my round. And we're pretty much finished now. I'm just adding a few extra, a few extra lupin leaves, leaves, petals, um, whatever, whatever you want to call, whatever you want to call their green, their greenery that comes up before they do. I'm just pulling this down, making sure that I didn't start anything above the bottom of my canvas. Just by pulling down over top of this, just going to kind of make that all cohesive. So it doesn't look like I just have some one random stroke here. There, It's all growing up out of the ground. If you give this one a try, please tag me on Facebook at Clark Fine Art. On Instagram, I am at Clark underscore fine art. And I love to see your work. I'd love to see if you paint this one. Do you have lupins where you are? Drop me a comment. Let me know. What is your favorite flower? What flowers do you like to paint? I see people do roses all the time. And although I love long stem roses, I'd love to have them growing here in, in the yard, in the gardens, but they're not my favorite flower to paint. What's your favorite flower? So if you like this one, please do take the time to give me a thumbs up. YouTube does reward interaction and it definitely helps my channel. And I appreciate you spending your time with me today. I look forward to seeing what you do if you paint this one. There are our spring lupins. So it's just a very quick, very loose painting that's very simple for anybody to do, beginners or even if you've been painting for many years. This is a very simple, loose style painting, very easy flowers to make. So I hope you'll give this one a try. Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when my next video comes out. So after I stopped recording, I was looking at it and I just didn't like that thick band of grass that I had here. And I thought, you know what would be better? More lupins. So I just kept throwing in flowers here and there. Some overlapped others. Then I went back and I also added some more uh, splatters to the top until I got to something that I liked more. So I encourage you, keep going. Always take a step back, look at your painting and decide, is there something you would like to do that could improve it? And try it. What's the worst that's going to happen? You let it dry and you paint over it? You wipe it off? Um, you just start again? Or you get something that you really, really enjoy? So there's my actual finished lupins. And let me know. What do you think? Are you going to try this one? I look forward to seeing it. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you spending your time. And until next time, have a great day.